Hey, what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench. This week we're gonna take a look at creating flower-like structures in Cinema 4D. This week we're gonna take a look at creating this flower-like structure made entirely of cloners and primitives, and then we'll animate it. So let's get started. So my base part of this animation is a mow spline, and I'm using it for pretty much all the leaves of the flower. The reason I'm using the mow spline is there's a bunch of parameters that I can use to animate a spline that makes it really simple. So to start off with, I'm animating the length and the bend. I'll show you this is what that looks like. And then under display mode, I set this to line. Basically, I'm gonna use a sweep to give my leaf shape. So I'm gonna stick that in here. For my leaf, I used a sizzoid which if you've not used it before, it looks like a V, but it makes a nice leaf. If I turn this on, this is the leaf you get here. Now there's a couple settings I had to change here to make this work. Number one, I changed the rotation of the leaf inside the sweep by adjusting this parameter here. And if you've never done that before, here under details, there's a couple graphs, I should say, that you can adjust. So this one adjusts the rotation of the sizzoid inside inside the sweep and then this one adjusts the scale so this is a good way to give your leaf shape so you can see just by controlling how the spline turns you can change the shape of the leaf so that's pretty good for that one and you can see we're not actually perfectly straight so i'll probably just adjust this a little bit there you go so let me play that back for you and give you an idea as to what what we just created now, of course, there's a couple other settings inside the Mo Spline that you could use, um, namely twist or angle or something along those lines. So, like, for example, in this mode here, I think we're probably going to animate the scale so it doesn't get this folded over look. So, because we're using the Mo Spline, we can actually adjust the width. So, I could keyframe this here and keyframe this to nothing here. And we hit play, and you can see this gives us the leaf growing effect. Now, the other cool thing about using Mospline is that you can use forces and effectors on it. So, for example, in my final animation, I added a little bit of a wind deformer. So, then the next thing is I took this sweep and I stuck that inside of a cloner. And I set my cloner to radial and I made sure that I was not in that axis. Um, and I set my radius to zero. Now, I'm going to turn off the wind for right now. So, you can just kind of get a feel for what's going on. Now, we definitely need a spot for the flower or for the leaf petals to come off. So I'm just going to create a sphere for right now. Mm, smaller than that. Probably something along these lines. So you can see this is what this looks like. And when I turn on the cloner, you get a nice flower type shape coming off. Now, the one thing I would do is I'd like to add some variation to this. So I'd go ahead and do a, a random effector. Um, not this crazy, probably zero on the X and the Z, and then just probably like one on the Y, maybe two, just to give it a little bit of variation. And I'm gonna give a little, little rotation variation too, mostly because flowers aren't perfect and it gives it a nice little extra effect. So that's the base. And then I went on and continued to layer this up by creating another cloner, moving it up in the Y, changing the amount of leaves it has, changing the radius, changing the offset down here where you can actually change. Now the one thing you'll notice is that all of these new petals are kind of going through in the same space, which is not ideal. So what I did was inside the transform of the cloner, I adjusted the pitch so that they were up a little higher so that they wouldn't be all kind of going through each other. And I think my offset here is a little bit aggressive, so I'm just going to I'm just going to turn it off for now. And you can see I'm still using that same random. So that's also adding to our flowers going through each other. But also as you kind of go up in your flower, you're going to want to 
tuck in the insides of these petals because otherwise they're going to be going through each other like this. And that's pretty much easy to do. You just grab this in our sweep here. We can just adjust the amount of this curve. And then you can even grab this random back in here so that you get a little more extra variation in there. So this is pretty much how I did it. So let me take you through the more complicated version of this. So if you watch this, it's set up exactly the same way as our base setup I just showed you, except for obviously it's a lot more different layers and there's a couple other things going on here. So let me take you through this setup. So to start off with, here's our first layer and it's our basic flower shape that I showed you earlier, but I have one additional thing I did to it. So the cool thing about the most mine is that you can also add effectors to it. So I added a delay effector here set to spring and then in my sweep shape here, I've kind of given it this rounded kind of look. So that's what's giving us our leaf shape is this rounded look here. So I have the delay effector turned off. Let me turn that guy back on. You can see how this looks. Now there's one other thing. When I animated these, I went into the F curve editor. And if you look here, let me show you what the curve for this one looks like. So in here, you can see that my length is animating up and I'm overshooting my final resting point with the curve so that it's kind of going past and then kind of slowly coming back. That's what's giving it that elastic feel to it where it's kind of going away and then coming back and then the delay effector is over accentuating that. And I did the same similar thing with the bend, but in the bends cases, I'm speeding up and then slowing down way at the end here. So I've got kind of a gradual speed up and it goes really, really fast, and then it slows back down. Let's see, this is what it does. All right, so for the next layer up, see we changed the amount of petals. Our first one only had five. Our second one has eight. So I'll turn that guy back on. I also, on this one, I'm adding a random effector. So you kind of see what this one looks like. And obviously I'm adding the delay effector and I animated this one the same way with length and bend with a little bit of overshoot. So then to continue up, my next one is this middle portion here and it's created the same way. Just as I'm moving up, I am changing the pitch and I'm also changing the amount of petals. Now on this one, I added a little bit of an extra bend on the end of it, just cause I thought it would look nice to get a little bit of extra curl here. And I did that with just a regular bend deformer at basically at the tip of the most line, which is giving you that extra little bend there. So let me play these back. I added one other little bit of animation to this one. I basically went in here under my most spline and I animated my H angle and P angle. And that's why it's, it has that little bit of extra twist, like a, almost like a flower unraveling. And again, I think to add to the effect, it would have been nice to add a little bit of animation to the width here. So then my next layer up is just like this little nub thing in the middle. Flowers have different names for every freaking part of it, but I just made it to look nice. And that one just animates up. And then finally I made these little dangly bits, these long guys. And these are created exactly the same way, except for in my sweep here, as you can see, I changed the curve so that I have a nice little long piece and then like this little V shape at the end of it. And then this one I'm animating the same thing, the length and the bend. And on this one, I added the wind to it just to add a little bit of extra movement to this. Yeah, it just kind of moves just slightly. So that's it for this effect. I hope you take it and build upon it, make your own flower, or use these techniques for something else. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog and the website at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we will see you soon.